Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Let's Talk Criterion. And in this edition, we'll be looking at the latest Janus Contemporary title. That's Orlando, My Political Biography, a film by Paul B. Preciado. Jonas Contemporaries releases Blu-ray editions of first-run films, fresh from theatres in association with the Criterion channel, but they're not actually in the collection itself. In 1928, Virginia Woolf wrote Orlando A Biography, the first novel in which the main character changes sex in the middle of the story. A century later, philosopher, trans activist and filmmaker Paul B. Preciado sends a letter to Wolf in Orlando, My Political Biography. Blurring the lines between reality and fiction, Preciado reflects on how Wolf's fictional character, Orlando, has transcended literature to become reality. He also explores the transformation of Orlando's body as a symbol that resonates with trans and non-binary individuals worldwide. The film starts with footage of the filmmaker on a city street at night, wheat pasting posters with slogans, questions and cryptic statements, and only becomes more playfully obtruse from there. The film is political in that politics are personal and less of a biography than a work of literary criticism in cinematic form, and an essay on art, society and sexual identity that roams wherever it wants to and wherever it needs to. It's framed as a reply to Virginia Woolf's novel Orlando. In the novel, the protagonist goes to sleep one night as a man and wakes up the following day as a woman, and then moves through time that way. Sally Potter directed a now beloved film, Adaptation, starring Tilda Swinton, Orlando. Preciado is fascinated by the Wolf book and respectful of its impact, but also irked by how it glossed over the details of the process by which Orlando was transformed. The film itself takes an I am Spartacus approach to the text, casting an assortment of trans and non-binary performers as a sort of gallery of incarnations of Orlando, or as people who give their first name as Orlando, including Oscar S. Miller and Janice Saroy, plus one who plays the actual wolf character. And then it puts them in dramatic or comedic sketches, and in some cases, tableaus that feel almost like art installations themselves, sometimes with visible lighting rigs in shot, and lets them muse on the process of transitioning and the obstacles placed in the paths of individuals trying to do it. Now there's one particular sequence where it shows a group of Orlando's waiting in a doctor's office who can prescribe hormones for them. And back in the doctor's office, one of the Orlando's is asked obtrusive and leading questions about their feelings about their genitalia. And a subsequent conversation takes place between Orlando's, which reveals that one has to lie to the doctor and say that you hate your genitals to actually get the prescription. <laughs> and that's one of many examples of how people's right to determine their own identity and presentation is sometimes held hostage by the rest of society, including the appointed gatekeepers of the medical establishments. Now, the key gesture of the documentary itself is in fact to turn out to be the intentional blending of fact and fiction, and of story and history, of literary and the lived in. Now, throughout, Preciado introduces us to many different Orlandos. Uh, one, for instance, I'm Jenny Belair. She tells the camera, for instance, and in this film, I'll be Virginia Woolf's Orlando. Now, such a line is repeated every single time we meet another Orlando, each of whom dons only a ruff, that pleated collar so associated with the 16th and 17th centuries. And this is creating a sense of continuity between all the Orlandos. Now, the disparate continuity created here is, for Preciado, certainly, very much the point. 
Understanding that trans and gender non-conforming bodies are contested discursive spaces, the filmmaker is intent on offering a plural and pluralising vision of Orlando as a trans archetype. It's why they're able to be depicted as easily by a self-described trans boy who has ginger hair, as also by a trans woman from Venezuela. Now, in some cases, the images are a tad too absurd. There's several scrubbed in doctors, for instance, performing surgery on Wolf's book with scalpel and hat. And there's an English language disco dance number at the doctor's office with lyrics like, They say you are dysphoric, but it's just metaphoric. Yes, I know. These merely push film and discourse into the realm of camp. But such winking knowingness squarely locates Preciado's project in conversation with, and in debt to, a very long line of queer filmmakers, who have similarly used tranchant comedy to make narrative and cultural spaces for queer and trans folk alike. Now, with Orlando, my political biography, Preciado has crafted a towering manifesto that's as nimble in presenting abstracted gender theorizations as it is in capturing moving emotional truths. And credit here certainly must go to the film's dynamic editor, that's Yotam Ben David. Now, the film's title may well defer to Wolf's protagonist, Orlando, but here is a keen eyed and a piercing adaptation that may well transform the way readers of that novel, with the fickle feminist figure, forever to understand Wolf's legacy on the page and on the screen. And of course, you can't ask a dead writer what she thinks of a letter addressed to her posthumously, of course. But Virginia Woolf would certainly have been delighted with Paul B. Preciado's scintillating and erudite discursive film. Now, as usual, with the Janus Contemporary releases, you'll only get a very short feature. In this particular case, it's Meet the Filmmakers, and it's a new interview with director Paul B. Preciado, and there's a trailer for the film, and a fold-out leaflet. Now, Orlando, My Political Biography is a new LGBTIQA plus film, which has more literary criticism than film. Preciado's cinematic essay won the Teddy Award for Best Documentary at Berlin. Uh, Preciado is a Spanish writer, philosopher, and curator whose work focuses on applied and theoretical topics relating to identity, gender, pornography, architecture, and sexuality. And originally known as a female writer, in 2010, Preciado began a process of slow transition, where he started taking testosterone to medically transition. And from this point on, he has publicly considered himself transgender, as well, of course, as a feminist. Preciado invited a diverse group of more than 20 trans and non-binary people to play the role of Orlando and to participate in this shared biography. And of course, together, they perform interpretations of the novel, weaving into Wolf's narrative their own stories of transition and identity formation. And not content to simply update a groundbreaking work, Preciado interrogates the relevance of Orlando in the ongoing struggle to secure dignity for trans people around the world. Now, the film has a running time of 102 minutes, and it is distributed, as I say, through the Criterion Collection, and it releases on Tuesday the 25th of June. I was certainly very impressed by this film, and I strongly recommend you take a look at this particular piece of work. In the next edition, we'll be looking at the David Lynch film Blue Velvet, starring Isabella Rossellini and Kyle MacLachlan. It gets a 4K UHD upgrade in the collection. So until then, from me, it's goodbye, and above all, good criterion viewing. Music